All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen, Danny Boy here from Manila's Wave 89.1. And with me today is a super talented musician who made his debut, listen, like four years ago on YouTube. He's worked mm -hmm. with the likes of Martin Garrix, with Drown. You got a bunch of new tracks and videos. We'll be talking about that. So mm -hmm. uh, welcome, Clinton Kane. What's up, man? Thank you so much for having me. That was really long. Do you have to say that all the time? The, the mix and then this and then the, like, that was um, really long. It was Is just this, me. Do, do that all the time? It's just me bragging. Oh, that's okay. It's that's always great. Yeah. If I had that that many accolades, I would do that too. Clinton K, Martin Garrix, Martin Garrix, Drown, feature YouTuber guy. That's about it. Yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> I like to flex every now and then, especially when Here I'm with, with people like you, talented people. I have to kind of like peacock a little bit. I, that's why. <laughs> no, but thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good over here. I'm here in Turkey. Wow. At the moment. Yeah, Istanbul. What are you doing over there? The Just vibing. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Because <laughs> I, I was in Amsterdam for about like six months wow. um, and my visa ran out, so I had to leave basically. And oh, yeah. I, I basically just wanted to stay in the vicinity of, of Europe. I didn't want to go too far away to like Australia or the Philippines or Asia or anything because it was like too, too much of a flight. So yeah, I'm here and I've been here for about like 10 days or a week. Nice, nice. So yeah. I, I guess you're holding up okay during quarantine. I mean, I mean, that seems like a great place to be, to be honest right now. It's not bad. Everything's yeah. everything's open, so that's kind of great. Like gyms are open, everything. You know, everyone's social distancing. Like, everyone's wearing a mask, and, and you know, everyone's being smart. But um, yeah, I don't think it's as bad as the Philippines because I, I talked to some people over there, and you guys are in like super super lockdown or something. Um, not not super lockdown, but yeah, we we kind of went back to the early months in terms of like when we can go out, uh, things oh. of that nature. But it's, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Hopefully, it gets better. But like I said, yeah. earlier, man, you're so talented. I really appreciate your time. And if you guys didn't know by now, you're a half Filipino, of course. And you know, Filipinos when when we know one of us makes it, we you really get behind an artist, man. I'm sure you felt. I love that. it. Felt that I, love. I did without a doubt. Without that, felt I feel so much love from the Philippines. And did you have like a, a Filipino like community or like a, a group of friends from where you came from? Um, I know a bunch of Filipino people without doubt. Yeah. And would you say that like growing up, did you like have any uh, anything you can attach yourself with the Filipino culture? Like, do you remember things growing up? Sinigang, Sinigang. Ooh. You know Karakare. That's like the number one answer whenever I ask anybody what, what food. It's you so like. good. It's literally if I could cook it right now, I would. But I don't have I don't have I don't have the mix thing. I don't have those those packet things that you put in the in the hot steam water with pork and. Uh, oh man! If I had it, if you could send me one right now, that'd be great. That would I'll, make my year. I'll send it over, bro. After this interview, I'll send it over. <laughs> All right. Well, you you uh, started out in like 2016, if I'm not mistaken, like posting covers and stuff on YouTube, and that's how you yep. kind of gained your popularity. Um, mm -hmm. Your first cover was what? And like, why did you decide to start doing it officially? Uh, my first cover was One Dance by Drake. Oh, I wow. I think, I believe it's still up on YouTube. Okay. Um, that was my first cover. I did it because I was bored. I didn't have anything to do. Like I was like in high school, I think, or like, or, or, or I don't I forgot what I was doing, but I was, you know, I had school and then outside of that, I had like sports and everything, but like I wanted to do something else. and. I just started doing it out of like nothing. I was like, I was bored. I think I can sing, let's put it out up there. And then I just kept doing it and I kept going. Not because of like, I had like sheer will to make it. I, I never I, I never had plans to, to, to be here by the way. To like, wow. to like, not, I, I had plans to be on this radio station without a doubt. I've been researching <laughs> you ever since I was born. But I never had plans to like, you know, do music as a full time right. job. I did that just because I loved it and it was fun. And, and now I'm here and it's, it's, it's crazy. That's awesome, man. So when you started like drifting off, doing your own songs, like making originals, were you mm -hmm. like feeling any pressure because you know, oh, I'm known as a cover guy, but I, I don't know how they're gonna accept my originals. Like, did you ever have that feeling? Before, Maybe early I, on? So I, no, um, the, the thing is I only started writing in 2018. I see. So I've never written a song I've never written a song before then. And I, I actually, I, this is a funny story. I released a song um, the start of 2018 and, and, I, and I said it was my own song. I said it was like an original that I wrote, but my brother wrote it. And okay. because I felt like, I felt so much pressure to release the original song. Exactly, I felt that in like, if when I didn't song, right? Mm -hmm. And I put it out, it was called Let You Know. And my brother wrote it and I, and I lied about it. Um, I don't think anyone knows, but, um, but yeah, and then I did that, and then 
it went okay. And then 2019, I started writing my own songs, and and there was there was there was I know I didn't feel any pressure. I I, I wrote my truth. I wrote honestly. Any like it started off with this is what anxiety feels like. That was like, mm-hmm. the first song I've ever written in my life. Wow. Put it out there. And then second song, this is what rough childhood feels like. Third song is what toxic relation feels like. And it all just like kept like people like just watched it and, and views kept coming up. And I was like, wow, this is like crazy. It was crazy to me. So, wow. No, at that time, I, I didn't feel that much pressure. For sure. well, that's awesome, man. And is there any uh, covers at a certain point in time that you wish you did? Or maybe another uh, cover artist that you wish you uh, could link up with just for fun, just for like a fun a session um a cover artist william singe oh I I, I, do, do you know william singe oh yeah I, definitely I think, uh, I think he's wavy is um i was gonna about to swear but i'm not gonna do that <laughs> um Thank william you. singe he's great um a cover that i wish i could have done i don't i don't think i have anything in mind i'm not gonna lie i think yeah. i've done all the covers that i had to do that's Honestly. a great answer though i mean like, at least you uh didn't leave anything out there in terms of just yeah. what you felt like all right, well, yeah. let's fast forward, all right? A few months ago, you and Martin Garrix teamed up for Drown. And Crazy. Manila has been showing a lot of love for this track. So how did you guys link up? What's the story behind that collaboration? Um, so we we met through like label, label like stuff and everything. Like my label reached out to him and, and we met and then we wrote the song together through FaceTime. Oh. So we finished, so we, we wrote the song through FaceTime. We finished the whole song through FaceTime. And um, and then before I actually even came to Amsterdam, the song was finished. The song was like done, like master produced, and it was all done. So the only reason I really came to Amsterdam was just like to party and like hang out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it happened like that, and um, you know we ended up loving the song. He ended up loving the song a lot, and me too. And um, yeah, and it came out start of this year, and and it was the it was literally the perfect like the perfect start of the year, like the perfect like send off of Quentin Kane and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, he's great. I love him to death. He's yeah. absolutely amazing. So it's an amazing yeah. song, man. Uh, you know, thank you, man. When I first, first heard it and saw the video, I was like, man, this is going to get a lot. Cause like I said, first of all, uh, the Philippines knows you're half Filipino. So they already show love. But then <laughs> when a song like that, uh, comes out where it's really, really, it really has, uh, the melody, the beat, everything, your voice is amazing on it. And I knew Thank it was going to pick up. So like for the last few months, honestly, I've been hearing it, you know, when I go to random places. Uh, so oh, Philippines is a very musical place, man. They got music. Without music. doubt. Yeah. yeah so. They've got Christmas songs playing in like September. Like what? I don't get it. September's already <laughs> Christmas. <here>. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. No, there but um, well, I was about to say something. Um, I cut you off my bed. No, 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 you didn't. I, I thought of something and I was like, <laughs> Never mind, just keep going. All right, all right. Remember it. Well, uh, since that time, since then, you've released several songs and videos, and mm-hmm. I noticed that your titles aren't always the traditional phrase or word no. of the song, right? You you sort of label them as a moment or like a, a stream mm-hmm. of consciousness type thing. Mm-hmm. So, can you talk about that creative process with that? Like, how, how did that come about? You mean titling my songs or yeah, like the way the like the way you title your songs and stuff. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm just bored. <laughs> literally, all there is to it. Like, literally, when I came up with the first few songs, this is what anxiety feels like. I there was I didn't really think about it. It was just like okay. I so I wrote that song. All first of all, all all the songs I write, they're they're personal experiences. Every single song, there's not one song where it's it's been outside of what I felt. There's something that's happened to me. So everything's very real. And 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 I wrote that first song, and I wrote those other songs. When I wrote this, what anxiety feels like, I was having an actual anxiety attack while I was writing it. I see. It was a panic attack, and then it's one of the worst things ever. And then when I finished writing it, the panic attack left. So it was like a, it was like a crazy like experience wow. for me getting into songwriting. It was like super like like supernatural or something. And and I guess I I was just like okay, I don't really know what to, I don't really want to go like normal way of like okay, should I name this bone shake or like some weird thing? And I was like, you know what? This is a song about my anxiety. Why don't we just call it "This is What Anxiety Feels Like"? Mm-hmm. And then that started to catch on, and and then that, and then that, and then now I now I'm trying to find the middle ground of like being a normal normal singer songwriter <laughs> and and still doing like you know the I don't want to watch the world end with someone else <laughs> as yeah, the title yeah. of a song. Um, right. And I and I, yeah, I, I it's the worst answer ever, but I'm I'm just bored. <laughs> oh man, that's all about there is to it. 
I, I like that answer because you know <laughs> sometimes people pretend like it's for something else so at least you're not fake that's what i yeah. love about you man you're dope and yeah. i like how you said that everything you've made is really something that's either happened to you or happening to you and that's very refreshing to hear man because you know you're not one of those artists that just make songs just because or i yeah. someone told me to do this but that's really dope man so kudos to you and well, uh, you know uh this is what it's like being cheated on looking for a dutch girl to marry <laughs> i wrote a song about my dad or like the latest post i think and yeah do you sort of schedule them or are you just like no kind of I'm, freestyling I'm freestyling it brother literally it's literally when i film it and if it's funny and if it's nice and if it's this and if it's that i do it on the fly most of those videos i've uploaded mm -hmm. i filmed it on that same day and then oh, uploaded, wow. okay. uploaded like the night so it's i'm like a, i'm a very like go with the flow kind of guy that's awesome man <laughs> there's not a lot of planning that goes into my life which which can be a problem sometimes <laughs> <laughs> well your video for hopeless has also been making a lot of noise and can you yep. talk about that particular track and how much time do you take out in a day, just in general, to kind of write or work on your craft? Like, what's a normal schedule for for Clinton? Um, I think it kind of depends. I, I, you know, it, it it would be nice to like schedule schedule like you know time of day to like sit down and write and everything, but because everything's so authentic to me and everything's just so based on my emotions, which is very unstable. If I can say so myself. <laughs> It, it 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 just it just comes when it comes. There's a it's just times where I'm like doing going about my day, just doing reading and and going to the gym and this and that and this and that, and working on like answering emails and all that stuff. And then you know I'll start to feel something and then I'll pick up my guitar and then I'll write. So it varies. It varies for sure. Like sometimes it's sometimes it's six five, six hours or this, or sometimes it's one hour, sometimes it's thirty minutes, sometimes it's none. Like I don't think I wrote yesterday. So it just it de it very much depends on on um what I feel. But um okay. But in terms of hopeless, um yeah, that's very real too. That's one of the one of the realest songs for sure because it it comes from a a place of me moving around so much mm -hmm. in my life and 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 um you know not feeling like there's there's a place where I can call home. I see. And you know not feeling like I belong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And and literally, is what it is. Like the song is like, I can't find my place. Never had a home to rest my a. Like it's just what it is. Like I can't find my place. I've never had a run to rest my. A. Like when I, when <clears throat> when people travel, like if no, if a normal person traveled, mm -hmm. they would be like, okay, well I'm leaving home and I'm gonna go to this place for two weeks and then after that I'm gonna go back home. Right. For me, I travel and okay, I'm leaving here for two weeks. After the two weeks, I've got to decide where to go because I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> Oh, I see. that's you know that's that's, that's like how um, my life is. Um, wow. uh, just curious, like where have you lived like in the past, uh, growing up, or like what countries or places have you kind of uh, had to move to? So so many. Uh, some countries in Asia, some con uh, the UK, Australia. So wow. it's, it's been a lot of like just here, the, 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 here moving around. I was thinking your your story about moving around so much. You know, I, I noticed your accent. Like there's certain times where you speak where I can't tell where you're from. Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird. It's it's because because the the fact that I moved around so much, I get yeah. used to an accent, and then I do here, and then I get used to an accent. And I it, besides all those countries I've lived in growing up, um, I was in America for a year. Okay, I was in LA. I lived in LA for a year, so I I definitely like sunk into me. I lived in Amsterdam for six months. I lived in this. It's like it's it's a lot of me because I'm surrounded by different people, so it's. It's very confusing. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, People are definitely confused for sure. I think that's that's a talent, man. That's another talent that you have. You're already a talented dude. That's not fair. Right? You can just switch up the accents like that. <laughs> all right. Um, I got some rapid fire questions where basically, if you can, just answer you know without thinking so much, and uh, it'll be just super random. And, okay. All right. Here we go. First one: beach or pool? Beach. House party or club? House party. Beer or liquor? Beer. Favorite place you've ever traveled to? Sri Lanka. Are you a neat freak? No. No. If a time traveler from like the 18th century came to you and asked you to show him some music, who are the first two artists you choose to show him? From now? From anything, from any time. Clinton Kane. That's and a Louis great Armstrong. answer. Yo, you Kane, know, Louis most Armstrong. people wouldn't say themselves, but I've been waiting for someone to say that. <laughs> Yes, show them your music, man. Right? <laughs> exactly. All right. If you weren't a, mu a musician right now, what other uh, things do you think you would be doing in terms of just career? Uh, um, a doctor. 
Ooh, uh, what other interests or talents that you have that might be hard to believe, or maybe just something that you're into that people are like, what? Nothing. Nothing. Just you're into your <laughs> I music. don't do anything besides music. <laughs> All right. What? Oh, speaking of music, what are some of your guilty pleasure songs you like growing up? I only listened to Christian songs growing up. So there's a lot of like Hillsong, Planet Shakers wow. and stuff like that. I, yeah, I grew up a church boy. So that's only awesome. Christian songs, cool. but yeah, that's about it. All right. Why do you think Filipinos have the stereotype of being good singers or musically inclined? And do you find it true? Because we're just good. <laughs> that's all there is. I mean, it speaks for itself. Like, so like what? I don't know what it is. I, it definitely came from my Filipino blood without a doubt, but um, has anyone come up with it? I think we should. I think we should pay some scientists to come and test all yes. the Filipinos in the world who can yes. sing, and then like get them together and like try to figure this out. You know Very I mean? rarely have I found a Filipino that couldn't at least carry a tune. Right? I think you can sing too, right? No, I try. I try. Ah, uh, yeah. But, well, everyone says that, but they're actually really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the good ones always say they can't. All right. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you did mention that your favorite uh, Filipino dish is sinigang. Is there a, a Filipino dish that that you tried that was kind of exotic or weird? Have you ever tried like balut? Or oh, like oh, that balut was weird. Balut was really, I don't get it. You guys should stop doing that right now, this instant. Like, I can't do it. Like, I can't do there's it. Like a, there's like a, there's like a, there's like a, like a semi dead bird. And then you eat the feather. Like what? That's disgusting guys. That's first of all. <laughs> Second of all is, you know, guan. Oh yes, the pig That's, blood. Guys, don't, don't drink, don't eat blood. It's Come on late, now. Man. It's happening. <laughs> it's been happening. Do you, do you like that stuff? Do you, no. do you eat that stuff? No, okay, no, no. Good. I, I can't. Okay. I tried, like, I just tried just to try, but yeah, I, I couldn't, yeah. couldn't do it. Okay, if you did, then I would have left, so thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have left for real. All right, if you were to describe yourself as an artist and musician in one phrase or a short sentence, how would you put it? Can I swear? Yeah, why not? Really? Ooh. I think that's it. I think very honestly, real as fuck. I felt like the atmosphere kind of like kind of uh. settle after you said that. That was really cool, man. <laughs> I have to agree with that. I have to agree with that. But yo, Clinton Kane, man, uh, is there anything you want to say to your fans out here in the Philippines and uh, everyone else that's watching and listening around the world? To the Filipino fans, please, I'll DM me, I'll give me, send me Sinigang mixes package, please, like all those, all the things, send me character, all the stuff, send it to me. I can't find it here. I need some. Filipino food right now. So if you can DM me, I'll send you my address and you can send it to me. Um, all, right. all these and ladies to, are going to gonna be send coming, <laughs> sending over right now, man. And to all the other fans outside of the Philippines who don't have the Sinigang mixes, um, you're useless. So just, <laughs> I'm joking. No. I love you so much. I love all oh. of you so much. Thank you for tuning in to my music. And it, it you guys literally mean the world to me. Where, where are you most active uh, online? Instagram? Yeah. Instagram. Is it? Instagram and Twitter. Twitter. Just Clinton King, yep. Clinton King. Well, once again, Clinton King, thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to more new music from you. And uh, yo, I appreciate you. Keep it real. And hopefully I'll talk to you again soon, man. Always, man. Love. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, brother. All right. God bless. God bless. Cheers, bro. Bye.